Hello, you're welcome. You're welcome onto my channel today, and I'm very, very excited you viewing this video. I am Dr. Lion Kakonle. I am a sociologist. I'm a researcher. I'm an author. I'm a public speaker. Thank you very much once again for coming in contact and for visit, visiting this channel. Meanwhile, if you have not subscribed to this channel, mm -hmm. what are you waiting for? Kindly go ahead and subscribe. You have a lot to benefit from being a member of the family of this channel. Go ahead, click the subscribe button on your screen or tap the subscribe button on your screen. If you have subscribed previously to this channel, thank you very much for staying tuned. Well, I want to address, I want to, I'm making this video essentially to talk about ethno methodology. You know, my last video was on micro and macro sociology, the meanings, the differences, and the implications, the importance, you know, for research and for sociology. And I did mention in that, in that video that I would drop videos on theories in sociology. I haven't set the background well, in context of a macro sociology because theories can be macro and they can be micro. So they can be macro, they can be micro. So, and uh, so I'm starting with ethnomethodology, which is a micro theory because ethnomethodology looks at, you know, small scale interpersonal relationship on how people, you know, construct meanings and through patterns of, of, of their interaction. So, you know, this is very important. It's about ethnomethodology, it's about everyday practices of people, you know, as they interact and form social relationships. So ethnomethodology is very important. So it's the first one in the area of theory I want to address. And I've seen that a lot of people have problems in this area because ethnomethodology is relatively new, at least compared to maybe Marxism or structural functionalism. So it's one who's been there since the origin of the discipline itself. It's very important for me to mention that ethnomethodology, you know, was popularized, was made popular by the American sociologist, Harold Gavinka. You know, Harold Gavinka was, you know, can be considered as the most, one of the most important figures of, of ethnomethodology. And it's actually his work in 1967, which he described as studies in ethnomethodology published in 1967. That was like the, the book that actually popularized, broke the ground for ethnomethodology. So there have been debate about where well, some people have been doing something identical to ethnomethodology, some people have, have different names. But in sociology, the, the person recognized as the most popular person who popularized the, the subject matter of ethnomethodology as a theory, so to say, was I, I mean, can be described as Harold Gaffinke, an American sociologist. So then, what is ethnomethodology? It's very important for you to to understand ethnomethodology because the, you know the basic propositions of ethnomethodology actually are very relevant today. And when you talk about micro theories, ethnomethodology ranks very high. So there's no way you will not go to come across the ethnomethodology, and you may find it useful, which is why I want to mention, I want to drop this content so that you understand what it means. So, ethnomethodology is about ways and manners, you know, people develop, how people develop and apply shared methods. This is very important, shared methods, you know, of making sense of everyday social environment. You know, how ways and manners people develop evolve and apply shared methods you know of making sense of their social environment in everyday life you know of central to ethno methodology is the method that people use that's why you see ethno methodology is the method you know methods that people adopt that the shared shared meaning that is they have common understanding of the methods that they use in making sense of their social environment. You know, we talk about approaches, you know, strategies that people deploy every day as they make sense of their environment. You know, as people interact, the essence of everyday interaction is, is to make sense. Sometimes taking for granted common sense 
there are people deployed as a minister. So these methods, approaches, strategies, you know, that they deploy, it's actually what makes the understanding of human action in their contextual environment possible. That's why it's okay. I'm not talking about prejudice now or stereotypes, but you can say, okay, these people behave like this. This is this is how they see this particular thing. This is their worldview, and this is how they interact to create these methods of of, of uh, making sense of their social environment. This is very important to ethnomethodology, and you have to be you have to be very important. That's why ethnomethodologists themselves have come to argue that ethnomethodology is a method. It's not a theory. You know, that debate is there, but still, generally speaking, in sociology, we will still deploy ethnomethodology as a theory. In book. What are theories, basically? The theories are explanatory frameworks. These theories try to explain, and they bring propositions together. You know, I have a, I have a video on theoretical framework on this channel, so you can view that, and, and best ways to, of, of understanding theory. So theories are explanatory frameworks. You know, as people attempt to explain, you know, but ethnomethodologists claim that ethnomethodology is a method. You know, just it's, it's like a method through which people can understand social processes and human behavior. But since it has, it's also still enable us to explain, then people generally consider it as a theory. So as people develop this method, ethnomethodologists want to understand the method. You know, uh, uh, that people use and understand the people through this you know it's about everyday practices of people ethnomethodology ex studies and try to examine and explain everyday practices of people as they interact and form social relationship you know when they interact they form social relationship and this is why this theory is very important to us in sociology what was that their interaction and methods of their interaction and method they innovate you know, to form social order in, in a harmonious way. And another way you can understand ethno methodology is to break it down. Ethno means a unique social cultural group. Unique social cultural group. Ethno, unique social cultural group. A group of people who share social cultural identity and history. Method in between, if you break it into three, ethno method logic so the method there means the, the the methods the approaches the practices that people deploy in day-to-day -day, you know uh, in interaction and as they live their life so the methods so ethnomethodology you know uniquely on want to understand these methods through a strategic ethnomethodological methods you know logic means study analysis explanation you know how do you want to explain these methods you study you analyze you explain the methods for you to be able to have significant appreciable understanding so we want to study how social order you know is formed through the process of social interaction because don't forget one of the basic elements basic interest of sociology is to understand social order I've mentioned it in my video on what is sociology and why is sociology important. I want to understand the order, how is order developed and how is maintained. So in methodology also want to understand the patterns of this order through the method that people deploy in their day-to-day -day interaction as a process. So I've mentioned that people, that methodologists believe that they are not like theories, like the social action, but they are just giving a method, giving classifications of people's social action want to classify as people are relating you look at the power distance when you begin to talk about power distance that's why it's actually ethnomethodological ethno -methodological. because you're looking at how people are creating shared meanings through through their method power distance can give you a sense of the method that people use in terms you can even understand the conversation how people converse the kind of words they use in fact conversational analysis it's a major element. It's among the strongest elements of ethnomethodology. Conversational analysis. You study the language of people, the content of the languages, the structure of the languages, and the patterns, the methods through which the languages are used in context. So you classify. Ethnomethodologists classify 
people's action and even actors. So not just the meaning, but the processes of, of creating, of creating the meanings. You know, like we say in microsociology, essentially we're interested in contextual interpretation. So ethnomethodology is also is ethnomethodology is very subjective. You know, ethnomethodologies, even ethnomethodologists study sociologists themselves, study ethnomethodologists study the reports, the publications of sociologists to understand the processes of, pro of producing these researches, these outputs, these publications. We want to understand it. What are the methods and what, why, how is the method leading to these productions? So it's not just about the meaning, it's not just about the output, but the processes, the methods of creating it. What are the things going on in the minds of people? and in the action of people. How are they creating these meanings? And how are they deploying these meanings? And how are these meanings affecting the outcomes of human action? So subjectivity is very important in ethnomethodology. Mind that, what is below to the end? Because every statement is very strong and important. Subjectivity, ethnomethodologists do not believe in, contempt, con in con conventional, orthodox, established theories in sociology. In fact, Ethnomethodology is to give a counter narrative, a different way of doing things. And that's what led to ethnomethodology. Ethnomethodology is a strong methodological, disciplinary, epistemological, you know, rejection of existing theories. To say rather than theorizing, why not do? Why not understand methods? Why not deploy methods to be able to understand what people people are doing? So and ethnomethodologists believe that people, sociologists and human scientists essentially impose their objective constructions of things on society and on actors. You know, rather than allowing the subjectivity of the people in their contextual environment to breathe, understand the methods that people use to live their life every day commonsensically, co taking for granted common sense of how people live their life. Try to understand this common sense and the, and the methods used to create this common sense knowledge of society and how this common sense methodologically is holding this society together. So ethnomethodologists believe that it's not only about what sociologists or theorists think about society, but what the people think about themselves. It's not, about rig it's not about difficulty or rigorous nature or scientific nature of, of human action or understanding human action, but it is about supposedly how people create meanings through the methods of their interaction. These methods is what sociologists should be looking at. That's what ethnomethodologists are talking about. Social reality in society, they are real to the extent that that is the way they are in their society. We should not impose our assumptions as sociologists, as researchers on people, but to understand the people through their social reality and what they describe as social reality and how they describe, how they define the social reality and how important these social realities are, you know, of them. So, like I said, ethnomethodology is a part of microsociology and it's a way of investigating you know, the social reality, you know, among people, you know, their practices and their accounts of, of this. And, how's the, uh, and how do people create consensus in this society? What are the methods of interaction in this society? And how do this create the consensus in this society? So, disruption in such societies are important. And what are the processes and methods of these disruptions? And now can we understand society through disruptions by understanding the methods of this disruption? So methodology is not so much in alignment, it does not agree with conventional methodologies. No. They try to give alternative methodology, you know, and that is why the method no methodologists believe that they are not theorists, but they are methodologists to give us alternative way, micro way of understanding human action. So that's why ethnomethodologists usually deploy qualitative method because it's subjective. <laughs> it's mostly, if you go to do 
ethnomethodological approach because it's a microsociology. So ethnomethodologists use qualitative approach to more because they believe this is how you can have the earthworm view, the earthworm view, the detailed contextual view of that society. I, I mentioned this in also my last video. So mostly qualitative and they have, like I mentioned, different subfeeds now in terms of language, you know, um, and social interaction, formal, Institu former institutions in terms of um, what goes on behind the scene, you know, formal system behind the scene knowledge, and then conversational analysis, I know as a social process and realities through conversation, you know, conversational analysis, you know, in a way that if you're telling, and for, for example, if I want to play the role of an ethnometodologist, if you're having conversation with a colleague or a classmate or a family member, you know, as the conversation is going on between the two of you, I will be interested in the subject matter of the conversation. What is the conversation about? I will be, I will understand, look at the power distance between the two of you, even physical and social distance between the two of you, and the method of communication, even the language of communication, the content of communication, the process of communication, the actors of of, in communication, and the methods of the communication. So before I make sense of what you are saying, so it's not just about maybe what you are saying alone, but how you are saying it, in what manner, what method are you using, what are the distances and things going on beside you. Isn't it interesting? So rather than just sharing a questionnaire to the two of you and say you should just, or three of you, and say fill questionnaire randomly. So as an ethnomethodologist, I will be there. And I will observe this method and pattern of interaction through your conversation, even your choice of words, your choice of words, the language you are speaking, how you are saying it, the, the status and class of the actors in conversation. So all these things I will try to, to do to make strong sense out of it in a micro series. Isn't that interesting? Quite interesting. So ethnometrology studied in the practical methods, you know, of common sense listening as people, you know, as members of society interact every day. You know, try to study the practical methods that they do. Everyday interaction is of interest to, to ethnomethodologists. So it's not just a random, you know, study, but getting immersed in terms of observation in that society so that you can study effectively practical methods that people are using per day. I love ethnomethodology. I love theories. I love theories, basically. So anything comes. That's why one of the very first video I dropped on this channel is the uh, best ways of understanding theory. Uh, the best ways, how best to understand theories. And I mentioned five points, five ways you can understand theories in that in that particular video. View it. It's getting actually people have been viewing it, you know, very well. I think I did it about some months ago. So I love theory. I have published books on theory, you know, and chapters on theory. So this methodology for you, I think you should be able to do well after this, watching the, after viewing this video. So kindly subscribe to this channel. Tap the subscribe button on your screen. Click the subscribe button on your screen, and tell others this channel is a is a is, is a resource pool for you as a sociologist, as a researcher, and some other things. Thank you very, very much for being. Until I see you in my next video, I will, I'm going to drop another video on another theory. I'll do a series on theories you know, in your best interest. Thank you very much.